Hi year four, so today you are going to be working back into your Hundabasa designs. So last lesson, you were to look at this poster, which has a description of the elements that Hundabasa uses in his artwork. And you were to use those elements to create your own poster, like the one that you can see in front of me. What we're going to do this week is we're going to be adding colour to our pieces and what I want you to focus on and what I'm going to be grading it based on is how well you apply that colour with accuracy. So is it neat? Are you staying within the lines? And can you actually show me a couple of different colour techniques? So I'm going to have a little practice here on... Um, a blank piece of paper you can use the back of your piece if you've got scrap paper in the class that would be great and i'm just going to show you the three different techniques that i want you to use the first one is tone okay so i'm just going to write tone like so and that means that so if i was to have a rectangle here it means that the edges are always dark so we outline the edges it's wobbling a bit, sorry. Just going to stay straight. So you outline the edges and then you're going to use small circular motions to blend it so that it goes lighter in the centre. And you do that along every edge. And what that will create is it's going to create some dimension. And by dimension, I mean, it's going to make something flat look slightly more 3D. So it should look like it's getting more raised in the middle. Okay, like so. So that's tone. I would say that's a nice, easy one. You're probably used to colouring in like this. Okay, now that's a block colour. Okay, Hundavasa does use some block colours. But tone looks more skillful. Okay, and tone is actually a lot faster to do. When we're doing colour like this, block colour, you're going to use a lot of your pencil up. You're using a lot of pressure on your hand, which will mean your hand will probably start hurting. You're going to have to keep sharpening that pencil over and over again. So tone, the next one we're going to do is we're going to do a colour um, blend. Okay, and this is where we mix two colours together. So the colours that I'm going to mix are light blue and dark blue. Again, I'm going to pretend that I've got a rectangle. I'm going to start this side by using a circular motion. And I'm going to use a lighter pressure, holding the pencil further down. As I get across, take your time when you're doing this, okay, until it fades to nothing just like this okay, i'm going to get the other color i'm going to start at the opposite end i'm going to do circular motion and i'm going to fade it out so as i go further down i'm using less pressure i'm going to overlap them slightly Okay, if you've got to go a little bit back over with this one, you can do. That's a colour blend. So seamlessly from one colour to the other. And the last one that we're going to do is a fade. Oh, it's very similar to a colour blend. But we just fade one colour out. So I'm going to start off with the colour strong over here. And then I'm going to press lighter. If you use circular motion, you're going to get a lot smoother colour. And then I'm going to go back darker over this side. Okay, like so. So tone, colour blend and fade. Now I'm going to show you how to apply that to your Hundabasa poster. Um, on the back of this is another demonstration that I've done. So I can just show you. So I've gone harsher on the edges and then I faded it in. I've done the same on these two. I'm going to start off with these contour lines because I think that that's the best place to get your colour blending in. 
and I'm gonna do it with light green, dark green on one of the corners. So press harder. Okay, I'm not pressing, I'm never pressing hard, hard. I'm using medium pressure at the most. Otherwise you're gonna get scratchy marks. You're gonna end up with a sore arm and the work's gonna look rushed. It's gonna look heavy handed. Okay, so see how I'm fading that out? I'm not expecting you to do it as fast as what I'm doing, okay? I've had a lot more practice. So take your time and make sure that it's nice and neat. Then I'm going to leave a little gap. I'm going to start with the darker green up here. And I'm going to fade that out. So Until they join together and I'm overlap it. Whenever they're trying to get blended together, you want to press lighter. You press hard where they meet, it's never going to blend. So really light pressure when you need to mix the two and overlap it slightly. Okay, I'm going to bring a little bit more lime green over there. This is probably going to take you two lessons to finish okay it's quite a time consuming task because you want these posters to be great you want to be able to put these posters up around the school to show the rest of the children who Hundavasa is what his style looks like what his work includes and show off all of your creativity that you've had while you've been constructing this poster because everyone should be different I'm going to go back to green around this eye. Remember to keep sharpening your pencils as well. And that'll keep your work nice and neat. And then I'm going to fade that green out over here. And then fade it out. Nice and slowly. Anyone who's talking whilst they do this is not going to have work that's as skillful or high quality as people who aren't talking. I'm finding it really difficult, okay, to talk and do this because it requires a lot of attention, a lot of control. So that's my first one done, okay? I'm quite happy with that. Now we don't have to do every single line. So I'm gonna leave one line white and then I'm gonna do the one underneath the white one in tone. So I'm gonna outline, first of all, like this, all the way along the top. And I'm gonna do all the way along the bottom and then I'm going to go back to the edge and I'm just going to do really small circular movements until it fades in all the way along the top to begin with so do it until the, the pencil almost disappears and then we'll do the same from the bottom and they should fade into one another like so. You notice that I'm doing it more, I'm only doing ovals, so I'm just making the, the circles a bit more squashed. That's because I need to do it a little bit faster than you. But if you keep to circles, you're going to get a really smooth finish, which is what we want. Okay, and I would carry on doing that all the way across i'm not going to do the whole of the thing whilst i've got you here so just some parts i might then decide that i want to do the eye pink and fade that into the middle so even if you're just colouring it in, you need to do it in a circular motion. That's going to give you the best effect. I'm going 
gonna outline the eye a little bit in yellow and fade that in. Can you see that? Yeah. We want it to be nice and bright. The whole design needs to be nice and bright. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna outline that as well in a bit of red. So it's up to you how and what colors you want to use. I want you to, I'm gonna, even gonna fade this in a little bit just for a bit of effect. I want you to use the poster for reference and I don't want you to rush anything because we're going to have another lesson to add colour. No one should have their colour finished today. If you finish your colour today, okay, you've not been trying to do the techniques that I'm telling you and you're probably rushing it and it's going to look scratchy. I would much rather have really, really high quality work than rushed work. That's not the point of having art and trying to do it with a specialist like myself. We might be in remote learning, but I'm showing you everything that you need to do in order to do it to the highest quality. So as long as you're following my tutorials, then your work is also going to be outstanding. So I will carry that on. Just kind of see what colours you think would suit that part and focus on sections. Don't do little bits of everywhere and build it up. If you get the colour finished, which I highly doubt, then you can also outline everything nice and neat with a sharp black pencil. Okay, like so. to get a really nice polished finish. And all those parts that maybe you've had to fade it out like here on the green, you can show off all of the original contour lines and make the sections really clear. Okay, so, like that. Keep it nice and bright. Look at his colours. I would actually use the colours that are on this poster for reference because they work really well together. So, the oranges, reds and yellows really work really well. On these onion domes, the purples and pinks and blues. On the houses, don't make every house the same colour. Try and make the whole row of houses different colours to make it stand out. Try and use different techniques. If you get just the ground finished, okay, that's perfectly fine. As I've said, I want to focus purely on quality, not quantity. And I really look forward to seeing what you all produce. Thank you very much. Bye.